Okay, well, hello, we are live. Welcome to Decimals with Doug and Mocha. And Mocha's gonna look at the camera, at least a bit, because I put a dog treat. Oh, I put the dog treat on top of the tripod to try and get her to make eye contact with the camera. Dogs and cameras, okay. So anyway, this is a dog who is extremely shaggy. She's at her shaggiest because she has a date with the hairdresser tomorrow. And the next video I make in this series, I will have a very smooth little dog. Lie down, lie down, stay. She will get the treat at the end of the lesson. That is asking a lot. Okay, so this is my Hearts jersey. Hearts are a soccer team from the Scottish League, Edinburgh. Kind of cool jersey, cool logo. Hey, it's a heart, right? Roughly, roughly where my heart is. Haha. <laughs> okay, let's get into the math. It's time for the math. Oh, I drew pizzas. Is this a decimals lesson or is it a fractions lesson? Well, let's face it. Fractions and decimals are really the same thing, kind of, because a number can be expressed as a fraction and the same number can be expressed as a decimal, and that's really where we get started with decimals. So yeah, this is back to basics. But you haven't seen me drawing many pizzas lately because decimals make sense when the denominator is 10. And when, when do you ever see pizzas that are cut into 10 equal slices? Well, these three pizzas are cut into 10 equal slices, although I haven't thrown in the actual pizza yet because I'm trying to keep some mystery about this lesson. Um, so these can be expressed with fractions with 10 as the denominator, and they can also be expressed easily as decimals because that thing with 10 and decimals and 100 and decimals, it's a thing. Okay, so let me draw in some pizza. So three pizzas were ordered to some kind of pizza party in my classroom, let's say. And it just so happens these are the slices that are still there. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six slices still there in this pizza. So how much pizza we have? That fraction would be six over 10. So did I draw that big enough? I can't really see it. The tripod's kind of in the way, but I, it's going to have to do. These pizzas are taking up a lot of space. Okay, so this pizza, people who went at this pizza, you can see they were sort of targeting a certain slice they wanted, but often pizzas, the slices are taken away sort of in order, starting somewhere and, and rotating around the pizza. And that's what happened with this middle pizza. But this also has six slices left. That I should be able to see. Uh, I could draw it a little bigger, but I'll try to remember to write larger. Depends on how far the camera is from the chalkboard wall. I could always adjust to that so quickly. And the third pizza, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six slices still there. We have six out of 10 slices remaining in each of these three pizzas. That's an interesting coincidence. So people have gone at the pizza, all three boxes were opened at once and people took four slices, four slices, so 12 slices have been taken. There are, there are six, 12, 18 left. Of course, we know math, so we're able to figure that out quickly. We can sort of count, but I didn't really count there. I sort of, I did it a little faster than that, didn't I? So what was it that I was doing? In fractions land, it's like I was adding these three fractions. And six over 10 plus six over 10 plus six over 10, we can do because they have a common denominator, which is the 10. And six plus six plus six is 18. So we have 18 tenths left of these pizzas. Hmm. But of course I should express this as a mixed number. And 10 fits into 18 once, and the remainder is eight. So I have one and eight, ten, one and eight tenths pizzas left. And we know how to convert between a fraction like this, even when it's a mixed number, and a decimal. I know we know because we've been doing it for a couple of weeks. So that's equal to one, 0.8 P 
pizzas. We have 1.8 pizzas left. I was able to figure that out using math. I didn't really figure out 1.8 pizzas left by counting. I'm able to do more than just counting. Hmm. But of course, there's another way of doing this. Adding these three fractions, hmm. We can convert each of these fractions into a decimal. And again, because the denominator is 10, that translates rather swiftly. This is going to be 0 0.6. And this is also 0 0.6. All of these are 0 0.6 if we convert them into fractions. And we add, when we add 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6, well, let's do it. I'll do it over here. I have some space. So if we have 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6, it looks like this. 6 plus 6 is 12 plus... Oh, oh, put your decimal down there, Doug. Please, Doug, stop forgetting that. We're adding. I'm not like if I were multiplying. I wouldn't want to put the decimal yet, but I'm adding. So, now that the decimal is in the right place, right below the other one, 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. That means I put an 8, and I carry the 1, and 0 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, plus the one I carried is 1, and I get 1.8. Of course, we knew that was going to happen. It happened when we added the fractions. So when we convert those fractions into decimals and add those, it happens. But then there's one thing that's missing from this wall of delicious chalkboard art, which is we could multiply. We don't have to add these. We could say, since they each happen to be 0 0.6 pizzas, we could say, well, what's 3 times 0 0.6? I want to make sure this fits. So there's my 3. I need more chalk already times 0 0.6. Now the decimal with the 3 would be over here, and I'm not lining up the decimals because you don't do that when you are multiplying. We are multiplying. So I just line up the numbers so that the last digit I have in each number is lined up. And so the 3 lines up with the 6, and then we're multiplying. 3 times 6 is 18, so we put an, a one, an 8, and then we carry the 1, but 3 times 0 is 3, uh, sorry, 3 times 3 times 0 is 0, plus the one I carried is 1. So I, have, I write 18, and then I count how many digits are there to the right of the decimal point in total for both of the numbers I, I multiplied. And there's just one, this one. So therefore, from here, I, I move one spot to the left, and that's where my decimal goes. And I get 1.8 pizzas, which is the same answer I got from adding the decimals, and from adding the fractions. Huh. And I could also multiply the fractions, but it's not a fractions lesson, it's a decimals lesson. The whole point of this is to remember the relationship between fractions and decimals, and to think of the relationship between addition and multiplication. Because let's think about it, pretty much any multiplication that you do could also have been done as an addition. Hmm. But it becomes more convenient to use multiplication sometimes. If we're adding 25.6s of a pizza, well, adding them up would become very, very long to write out, but the multiplication doesn't take very much space. There's a point at which it's a good idea that we learn how to multiply because adding would be inconvenient in that situation, and multiplication manages to not be inconvenient. Multiplication is great. They're both great. Okay, so that's my f starter topic for this week's decimals lesson. And it was an excuse to draw pizza, because I love drawing pizza and I love eating pizza. And I have this dog here who is still looking at that treat, which is right above you there on the tripod, right above the camera. But I don't have anyone else here, which is one of the reasons that the dog is my audience, my live audience, because there's no one upstairs to distract her and I don't expect anyone to come to the door. I really hope no one comes to the door because she'll start getting excited and I don't want to interrupt this lesson to go to the door. But why is there no one upstairs? Because Bunny, Bunny, my wife who normally is upstairs, has gone to visit the daughter and the grandkids. And you know what that means, because it's an overnighter. So that means I'm having pizza tonight. So I had pizza on the brain. I'm going to be ordering the pizza in a couple of hours. I'm already salivating. I'm drool. Oh, I'm not quite drooling. Let's hope I don't drool. I'm already salivating in anticipation of the pizza. I'm not going to order three pizzas though.
Even Doug won't go that far. I'm going to order two pizzas. Okay, enough about pizza. Let's do some more multiplying of decimals. Okay, so we multiply a decimal only here. That is the only part of all this where we actually show the multiplication of decimals. And it is a review. It's a fairly simple one, and I know that we've done this already. We're doing it some more because multiplying of decimals is important. So we have to put some time into it and try some different styles of problem, try different sizes of numbers. We're still doing that, and I'm happy because I like doing it. It's fun. Okay, I'm going to erase. Even erasing the pizza, that's sad. After I drew that pizza, and it's hard to divide a pizza into 10 equal slices. So I was really careful as I was drawing that, and I did a bit of erasing and then restarting when I was doing that. Okay. We did 0.6 times 3. I erased it, but I'm going to show just in a line 0.6 times 3, and we got 1.8. And when we do this, even in a line with a simple one like this, we can see, okay, yes, there was that one digit to the right of the decimal and just one of the numbers, so there has to be one digit to the right of the decimal in the answer. And then what if I had 0.06? times 3. Well, the 3 times 6 gills still gives 18. We can still write a 1 and an 8. That's going to happen. And then we deal with the decimal after. We have to make sure the decimal lands in the right place. Now, there are two digits to the right of the decimal here, and there are none to the right of the decimal there. If I'm showing this with a decimal, I'd have to put the decimal right there where my finger is, so there are no digits to the right of it, and just having a zero to the right of it doesn't count. So if you wrote it as 3.0, it's still these two digits. And even though one of these is a zero, the last one to the right is not a zero, so they count, including the zero. So there are two digits, therefore they have to, the decimal would normally be here, but I need two digits to the right, so I'm doing this hopping thing. I can show where the decimal would normally be if it really was 18, but this situation forces me to make that decimal hop two spaces to the left, and I'll just make sure it's really clear. I have room, so I'll do it. Equals 0.18, or if I want, I can write 0 0.18, 0 0.18. So again, it's a review. And then what if we had 0 0.18? 006 times 3. Remember, I need to draw larger now, aren't I? Okay, it's still giving me 18. 3 times 6 is still 18. But now I have 3 digits to the right of the decimal, because I have to include both of these zeros. In total, 3, so I have to have 3 digits to the right of the decimal here, so I'm doing the hopping. The problem is I don't have enough digits to hop 3 times. I only have enough digits to hop twice. So I have to put a 0 here and hop a third time anyway. So therefore, my answer is 0 0.018 or 0 0.018. So this hopping thing. Hopping's fun. But I'm going to move on. Again, even that was a review. Let me check the time. I also want to be careful about the time. But I'm actually right on schedule pretty much with what I planned. So now I have a bunch of the multiplications to do. And I'm going to show them in that different way, not in, with the numbers written in a line like this. And what I'll do is I'll put the first one up, and I'll allow you to think about it. But it's still a pretty simple one. What I'll do is I'll write it in a line first. Uh, how do I want to do this? Because hmm. there's more than one way of doing it. I think I'll juggle it. Sometimes I'll write it in a line and I'll solve it in a line, and other times I'll write the numbers one above the other one and, uh, and I'll solve it that way. Or I could do an example where I do it both ways. 8 times 0 0.2. So I think with these, because we're still on some pretty simple ones, I'm going to keep doing it the way I was just doing it, which is I can say, okay, well, if I ignore the decimals, I have 8 times 2. 
And I know that's 16. And then I can count. Okay, there's only one digit to the right of the decimal in the two starter numbers, a total of just one. So therefore, I need one digit to the right of the decimal. My decimal is going to be here at 1.6. But because I could also show it like this, I will. 8 times 0 0.2. Now, notice how I'm lining it up. I am not adding. So the 8 is the last digit in this number, and the 2 is the last digit in that number. So I put those last digits lined up one above the other. I don't worry about lining up the decimals, and I don't try to write a decimal here. But then it's going to seem kind of similar, kind of familiar. I do 8 times 2, and that gives me 16. So I write a 6, and I carry 1. But 8 times 0 is 0, plus the one I carried is 1. And then I count. One digit to the right of the decimal in total. So I need one digit to the right of the decimal. Of course, I got the same answer. We knew that would happen. Let's do another simple one, and then I'm going to do a quick jog over to the fridge because I forgot to bring some fizzy water. Seven times 6.0. Hmm, you know what? I'm going to leave that there for you to think about. I'm going to do a stretch too. It's good to do a stretch. And this is the type of stretch I need the most when I'm teaching. I don't know if it's the same for a student learning as for a teacher teaching. Because when I was a student for so many years, I don't remember doing this particular stretch a lot during class or just at the end of a class. So it's either that teachers need a different type of stretch than students, or it's that old people need a different type of stretch than young people. Because back when I was a student, I was younger. Let me see, how long ago was it the last year I was a student? It's going on about, about 18 years for me. That's pretty long. I should go to school. But right now I'm going to go to the fridge. I'll be right back. Stay. I'm not talking to you students. I'm talking to the dog. Stay. And I've got my fizzy water. And this time it's oh, sparkling water and real squeezed fruit. This is new. And the flavor is blood orange tangerine. Ooh, sounds creepy. Okay, let's open this, have a sip, and then we'll get into some more multiplication. Ah, very mild flavor. That's good. I don't want it to be an assault on my senses. I just need it to... <coughs> moisten my mouth and <coughs> swallow a bit of chalk dust, I guess. Okay, 7 times 6.0. So it is a multiplication of decimals, but 6.0 is a number that could have been written without the decimal. We could have just written it as a 6 if we wanted. But still, hey, this is a multiplication of decimals problem. Let's do it. So all I have, if I ignore the zeros, is 7 times 6. So I know there's going to be 42 involved. A 4 and a 2 in that order are involved in my answer. And then I count. How many digits to the right of the decimal in total for these two numbers? Well, there's none here, and there's none here, because that only digit to the right of the decimal is a zero, so it doesn't count. So therefore, I need zero digits to the right of the decimal in this number, so the decimal is there. I can write it as 42.0, or I can just realize the decimal is there and, and write the answer as 42. It's still correct. And of course, 7 times 6 is 42. This is kind of a trick question, except it's not very tricky, is it? It's trying to be tricky, but it's failing. Okay, next one. Zero point three. Oh, that zero is so perfectly round. 0 0.3 times... 9.0. That zero is not quite as round. Okay. But I have a 3 and I'm multiplying by a 9. It's going to involve a 27. That is kind of a cool thing to do. So I know I need a 27. I'm leaving a bit of space next to the equal sign just in case. But I don't know if I need it necessarily. Most of the time I won't need an extra space. But if I need it, there's a bit of space there. Okay, 3 times 9 is 27. And now I'm counting those decimals. Here's one. This is a decimal. I'm counting the digits. Here's a digit to the right of the decimal. But that's just a zero to the right of the decimal. So I only have one. 
Therefore, 2.7 works. I didn't need that space for anything. 0.3 times 9.0 is 2.7. And then if we like to write it this way, okay, the fact that the decimals are lined up is just a coincidence this time. That does happen every now and then. Because both numbers happen to have one digit to the right of the decimal. If you want to show this 9 as a 9.0, then that's 0. Okay. So I have the last digit in my numbers lined up the way I do with decimals, and the fact that the decimals lined up is just a coincidence, and I'm not trying to write a decimal down here. I'm instead saying, what's 3 times 0? And 3 times 0 is 0. And 3 times 9 is 27, so I write the 7, and I carry the 2. I would carry the 2, but I don't have to because I got to the end. And then I don't need to do that second line thing because all I have here is a zero. Zero times anything is just going to be a zero. I would be adding a zero to this. So I have 207. But I have how many digits to the right of the decimal? It is kind of a trick question, isn't it? There's just one. There's this one because that one doesn't count. It's a zero. I don't know. Someone's really trying to trick me and they're not succeeding, but... It makes me slow down and be careful, and I think that's a good idea. Think about this. Why? Why am I only counting one digit to the right of the decimals this time? Because of that being a zero. So we have to treat the zero a little differently. So I only have one. But no, uh, that's see, that's it is tricky. No, no. You know what? It's interesting. The way I did this, I'm actually teaching myself something right now. Because I happened to write it like this. I had to put the zero here, so therefore the nine moved over a bit. And that put me in a position where I had to, I have to count this as a digit to the right of the decimal. Because it means I'm going to have two down here, one, two means two down here, two points, and I already know that 2.7 is the answer. So I'm gonna be careful about this. I think I'm going to be careful about asking students to do it. I think it's it actually falls into the you know, a little challenger question at the end category. What about this? Maybe a good way of asking is, multiply this in line, and multiply it like this, stacked up, and compare your answers and think about it. I think maybe that's the question that I just answered. Huh. Okay, another one. I'm gonna stop doing this silly little trick with the zeros and whether they count. Okay. But interesting how doing it both ways helped me to notice that there was something I had to be careful of. Hmm. It's good. It's kind of like adding the, the pizzas, adding the 0.6 of pizzas and multiplying. So I was showing the question two different ways, I was answering it two different ways, and when I see I'm able to get the same answer, I, 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 I realize how things work. So doing things two different ways is a good thing. Okay, 1.2, 1.2 times... 0 0.7. Okay, so this zero isn't trying to trick me. It's to the left of the decimal. It's not the same problem. But all I see if I ignore the decimals is 12 times 7. And I can do 12 times 7. That's in the multiplication tables. That's 84. So I'm going to leave space just in case I need it. I write 84, and then I'm going to stop counting decimals. Here's 1. Counting digits. Here's one digit to the right of the decimal here and one to the right there. We have to count both of them. We need two digits to the right of the decimal there. So therefore, 0 0.84, oh, 0 0.84 is my answer, but I could also, yeah, I left room. I can put a zero there if I want. And 1.2 times 0 0.7, 0 0.84. And I'll even try ballparking it. And it's a little tricky sometimes, ballparking, but 1.2 is pretty close to 1. 0.7 is also pretty close to 1. And 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So I would expect an answer that's pretty close to 1. And you know what? 0 0.84 is pretty close to 1. 8.4 wouldn't have been. Hmm, ballparking is useful too. Okay, and then we will write it this way as well. 1.2 times 0 0.7. And again, I'm lining up the 7 and the 2. And it's just a coincidence that the decimal's also lined up. And I'm not putting a decimal down here because this is multiplication. 7 times 2 is 14, so I write the 4 and I carry a 1. 7 times 1 is 7, plus the one I carried is 8. And then I count these 
digits to the right of the decimals, and I have a total of two of them, so I need one, two digits to the right of the decimal, and I have 0.84 or 0 0.84. I have the right answer, I'm doing it both ways. One reinforces the other, one verifies the other. Cool. Okay, I need to get I need to get some extra digits involved in these multiplications. Let's get it up to the level I know the students really are at. Because this is still kind of easier than a lot of the questions we were doing last time. 2.2 times 0 0.31. <clears throat> and you know how we were doing this thing when it's in line, where we just ignore the decimals and multiply. Well, it's not as easy anymore. We're getting to slightly more complicated numbers, and it's, I would have to multiply 22 and 31 in my head. And yeah, I could show off, I could do that, but there comes a point where it becomes inconvenient to try and multiply in your head, <clears throat> and instead, you might reach for a calculator. Or, remember that you have that other way of showing this, so I'm going to show it right now, even though I'm not going to <clears throat> answer it this way yet. 2.2 times, leave some more room there, times 0 0.31. Now this time, the decimals didn't line up, because this one just has one digit to the right of the decimal, but this has two. So when I line them up so that this two and this one are lined up, the decimals didn't line up. And I'm not writing the decimal on at the bottom, because I don't know where to put it yet. So I can do that, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to do it this way. Now I could reach for the calculator, but I could also be a show-off. But eventually, I'm going to end up with something like 8.79 times 0 0.3824. And I'm not going to be able to do it by showing off. It would take too long. So I would end up reaching for the calculator. It's going to happen eventually. Maybe by the end of this lesson, I'll find myself doing that. <clears throat> but let's try showing off. It's not really that scary yet. So 22 times 31, that's what I'm thinking of. So 10 times 31 is 310. And 22 has two tens in it, so 10 times 31 is 310, and another 10 times 31 is another 310, and 310 plus 310 is 620, but then I also have to do 2 times 31, which is 62. So 620 plus 62 is 682. Let's see if I did that right. And I'm leaving some space here just in case, because I'm not really sure what's going to happen yet with the decimals. And now I'll use my calculator to check whether I managed to do that in my head while I was showing off. 22, I'm still ignoring the decimals, 22 times 31. 682, nice, nice. I did that. Okay, I'm pushing myself to my limits. How many digits to the right of the decimal in total for these two numbers? There are three. So therefore, all three of these digits have to be to the right of the decimal in my answer. And if I want to write a zero, I'm going to have to put a fairly skinny one. And it works. Now let's do it this way. One times two is two. One times two is two. Finish that one. Then I'm doing this one, so I need to put a zero here. Three times two is six. Three times two is six, finish there. I didn't have to do any carrying because I have ones, twos, and threes. They're small, so the multiplications kept on giving me answers that are less than 10. I have to add these. Two plus zero is two. Two plus six is eight. Because I'm writing down at the bottom, I'm doing the two circles for eight thing because it's uh, gonna be easier than trying to do it from eight the regular way. And then zero plus six, or nothing plus six, or whatever you want to say, plus six, zero plus six is six. So I have 682, and then I have one, two, three digits to the right of the decimal, so I need one, two, three digits to the right of the decimal here. My answer is correct. I don't have to write a zero, but I can, and it doesn't have to be skinny. Okay, did it that both ways. Okay, do I want to try and do the next one as a show off in my head? Yes, I do. Love showing off. So long as students don't complain about me showing off multiplying in my head, I'll just keep doing it. 
I think it's because I like this thing where you have different ways of doing stuff. And being able to multiply something in your head is another way of doing it. Lots of different ways to show a multiplication. <coughs> Thirty-one point five times zero point oh oh three. Zero point oh oh three. I'm doing two different styles of threes again. I have a tendency to switch back and forth. That's quite a beautiful loopy three in this one. It's way I prefer to do my threes, but it's eh, a little messy. Okay. So all I'm doing is 315 times 3. Can I do that in my head? Yes. 3 times 300 is 900, and 3 times 15 is 45, so it's going to be 940, 945. I'm definitely leaving some space, because I might need it, because I'm seeing so many digits to the right of the decimals here. And how many do I see? 1. That has to count. This one has to count, which means both of these zeros have to count. Huh. 4. So that means I need to put another zero here so that I can put the decimal there so that I have four digits to the right. 0 0.0945. What a small answer. Why is it so small? 31.5 is pretty big. Let's ballpark this. 32-ish, 31-ish or 32-ish. But that, I almost have to ballpark it to the zero. Huh. So it should give a really small answer. Zero times 32 or 31. Zero times 31, zero times 32 is zero. So I should get an answer that's kind of close to zero, and <laughs> I did. Okay, getting the calculator. I don't want to leave this like this if I did make a mistake, but I really don't think that I made a mistake. 31.5, I hit plus by equals, by equal, I hit plus by accident. I have to watch out, I look at the equal sign and I say the word equals. Okay, 31.5 starting over times 0 .003, 0 .003. Yes, 0 0.0945 is the answer according to the calculator. I feel so smart. Okay. Hmm. to do this without the decimals, it's 15 times 71. Bleh. Even I don't know if I want to show off with that, so I'm not going to. I'm going to use the calculator right away. 15 times 71. I'm doing it that way though. I'm multiplying without the decimals and then I'm figuring out the decimals later. 15 times 71 equals 1065. Of course, there's no decimal in the answer because I didn't put the decimals into the question that I asked the calculator. And now I have to count digits, and there's just two of them. So 10.65 is my answer. Ballparking it, 1.5, let's call that 2. 7.1, let's call that 7. 2 times 7 is 14, not bad. Why is it 14? Why is it so much bigger than 10.65? Because Calling 1.52 is rounding this up quite a bit. But the only other choice would have been to say, well, 1.5, let's call that 1. 1 times 7 is 7. Either way, you miss by a bit. But you miss by a reasonable bit so that it still works. The ballparking still works to figure out if your answer is correct, because I'm sure it's correct. 2 times 7, 14, yeah, 10.65 must be correct. I must put, have put the decimal in the right place. 1.5, oh, need more chalk. 1.5, I want this bigger. And I also need to remember not only to write the digits larger, I need to leave more space above them because of the times that I have to do carrying. So 1.5 times 7.1, which of course could have been written as 7.1 
times 1.5. Remember, we always have that choice. So since we have a choice, we'll do the one we prefer. And I just prefer to do it both ways this time because I feel like it. Hmm. So the decimals lined up by coincidence. Both of these numbers have one digit to the right of the decimal. So when we line up the numbers, the decimals also happen to line up. I'm not putting a decimal down here. One times five is equal to five. One times one is equal to one. Now I have to do this seven. I have to put a zero. Not going to run out of room, no. Okay, seven times five is 35. So I'm writing the five and I'm carrying the three. And seven times one is seven plus the three is 10. So I'm putting a zero and the one because I got to the end. Five plus zero is five. One plus five is six. Zero plus zero or zero plus nothing is zero. One plus zero or one plus nothing is one. And then I count digits, one, two, I need two digits to the right of the decimal, so 10.65 is my answer, and I feel even more confident than this. And then, oh yeah, what about this one? Five times one is five, five times seven is 35, that's a five, plus a three that I don't really have to carry because I got to the end, so I'm just going to write the three. Then I'm doing this one, so I need a zero here. One times one is one, and one times seven is seven. Wow, I'm glad I did this, that's cool. It looks so different. But is it going to work? Yes, it is. Five plus zero is five, five plus, five plus one is six. Three plus seven is 10, so I have to write a zero and a one. And then the, the digits, there's one, two of them. I need one, two of them, 10.65, same answer. Does it fit in the camera angle? Yes, it does. That's fun. I like that. Am I at the end of this pile of examples I wanted to do? Yes, I am. And they still haven't gotten really complicated. But there's a lot of variety. Some numbers have decimal near the beginning. Some of them have a decimal near the end. Some of them have a decimal in the middle. Some of them have a zero somewhere. Some of them are two digits. Some of them are three digits. Some of them are one digits. That's the whole point. And then what if we ask the question slightly differently? This is not a big stretch. I know the students won't be too flummoxed by this whole thing, but if I'm going to ask the question slightly differently. So we get into that whole area of word problems. And word problems, some people don't like word problems. I've met students who don't like word problems. But there's nothing wrong with word problems. The secret to being good at word problems is to do a lot of them. If the student's not very good with word problems, you don't give them three, you give them 50. They just keep on doing them. What happens is you start seeing the same old stuff happening again and again. When you're translating the words into math, there's only so many different things that can happen. So if you do 50 problems, Things start happening over again that you saw before, and you start feeling more and more comfortable with the strategies that are involved in doing that translation from words into math, and then back into words again at the end. Okay, what if we need twice 3.2? That's all, it's the only different thing here. Twice, it's a word, but we know what it means. I step forward once, I stepped forward twice. I stepped forward two times. So twice means two times. And everyone knows what two times means. Two times. 3.2. Now, I promise you, I didn't know I was going to do that. But I like it. This whole step forward once, step forward twice, means I stepped forward two times thing. I love it. I have to remember that. Okay, so twice means two times. So I'm back to just one of the easier ones. We were doing these 15 minutes ago. Two times 3.2, I'll show it either way I want to. So two times 3.2, shown this way. Two times two is four, two times three is six. 
one digit to the right of the decimal in total for these two numbers, so 6.4 is my answer. Doing it this way, ignoring the decimal, 2 times 32, well, that's obviously 64. Multiplying by 2 isn't that hard. How many digits to the right of the decimal is just one? I need a decimal there. 6.4 is my answer. I did it. Okay. Told you that this was not going to flummox you. Let's do another one, though. <clears throat> some more fizzy water soon. Triple huh. 4.6. We want to triple 4.6. So that means I'm multiplying 4.6 by 3. You want to do 3 times 46 in your head? 3 times 40 is 120, and 3 times 6 is 18, and 120 plus 18 is 138. Oops, it's not an 8. There, now it's an 8. How many digits to the right of the decimal? Just one, so I'm going to put a decimal here. 13.8 is my answer. 3, well, bar, ballparking a 3 is easy. It's a 3. 4.6, let's call it a 5. 3 times 5 is 15, and I got 13. Uh, I feel pretty confident. I'm not even going to show it the other way. So this thing about words, that's all. We could also say, I want you to quintuple 1.731. Well, quintuple means multiply by 5. We know that's what we would do. So there isn't all that much variety there. Triple is used that way in real conversations sometimes. Oh, I need to triple this. Sometimes people might say that. Twice, that's going to happen a lot. People say twice a lot in language, just conversation, and in, whenever they say it, they mean multiply something by two. And we realize that. But there are not too many other words I can think of, because I don't often see someone saying to someone else, say, when I'm in that convenience store and I'm waiting in line, I don't see someone who's waiting in line saying, I want to quintuple the amount of money I made last year. Yeah, that's a good idea. I want to do that. You don't hear that very often. So there's not too many of these words to play around with. Twice was really the point. And it was fun. Right, I did it. I really like that twice means two times thing. I'm going to think about that many times before the end of the day and smile to myself. I'm going to <coughs> think about it when the pizza arrives because when the pizza arrives, there are going to be two of them. I am going to open the pizza box twice. Okay. Perimeter. We're getting into geometry. Well, not really. We're getting into geometry just so that we can practice our multiplication of decimals. But I am going to do a perimeter problem. In fact, I am going to do three of them. Let me see how I'm doing for my planned amounts of time for everything. Oh, well. I'm doing quite well. Okay, the perimeter of a square. So I'm going to write the word. I don't want to just say it and throw it out there. Perimeter. And I'll write of uh, smaller letters so that I don't run out of chalkboard because I'm going to put the word square. Square. Will it fit in my rectangle? I don't know. When I get over here, you see it's cleaner here. I'm afraid to look at the camera right now. You see it's cleaner over here because I don't use this part of the chalkboard very much. Oh, it fit. Good. Okay, perimeter of a square. If the side length of the square which we like to use S to signify. If S is equal to 4.4 feet, I want the perimeter. Well, what's the perimeter? I teach my students all the time when I am teaching geometry. Perimeter is the fence. An area is the grass. It's a way of making people not get perimeter and area mixed up, but we're not doing area right now. We're doing perimeter. And that's the length of the fence. So if you had a square yard and it had a fence all the way around it, how many people do you know who have fence on all sides of their property? Most properties, it doesn't work that way. But, you know, you can have, oh, and 4.4 feet, that's not big enough to be a yard. How about it's one of those squares that is printed on the pavement in a schoolyard? Uh, where kids play. 
And then there are squares sometimes in some of the games that they print for a feature to play. And I can picture a square that has side length of 4.4 feet, so I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so we have this square on the schoolyard, and its side length is 4.4 feet. What is the perimeter? Meaning, for instance, if we were to make that by putting tape down, how much tape, how, how, how much is the length of tape that we would need altogether to do all four sides? So that means we are adding 4.4 to 4.4 to another 4.4 to another. We could solve it this way. 4.4 plus 4.4. Oh, I'll do it this way. Plus 4.4 plus 4.4 plus 4.4. Just have enough room to put that. I'll put my plus symbol here. We're adding these. It's one way of answering it. And adding decimals is something we did. We did quite a lot of it a couple of weeks ago. Didn't add four decimals very often, except when I got into the money problems, where I went crazy and we added 12 and 13 values with decimals. But we can do this. We know how. We have all of our numbers lined up with the decimals lined up because this is addition. So the decimals have to be lined up for this to work. And I have put a decimal there, right underneath the others. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16. I'm putting a 6, and I am carrying a 1. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus another 4 is 12, plus a th uh, another 4 is 16. So I put another 6. Oh, no, no, I don't. Slow down, Doug. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus the one I carried is 17. I don't need a 6, I need a 7. So I have 17.6, my decimal is already in the right place. But if I multiply instead, what I'm doing is I am, because the square has four sides, I am multiplying 4.4 by 4. And when we do this, we need this 4 and that 4 to line up so that the last digit in each number lines up. And we're not trying to line up the decimals because they wouldn't line up, this decimal would be here. And we're not trying to write a decimal underneath. 4 times 4 is 16, so I write a 6. And I carry 1. 4 times 4 is 16, plus the one I carried is 17, and I'm able to write the whole thing. And then I count digits, it's just one of them, so I need one digit to the right of the decimal in my answer. Same answer. Although, oh ho 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 ho. It needs a unit of measure. regardless of whether you add it or multiply it, because, hey, people would say 4.4 what? 4.4, no, they wouldn't. They would say 17.6 what? That's what someone, you go into the hardware store and I say, and say uh, I need 17.6 of tape. And they say, 17.6 of what? 17.6 feet? They might guess feet. Yards? Inches? Centimeters? So you really need your unit of measure when you do this. This is fun. So it's so fun, let's do another one. And the best thing about it for me as a teacher is I don't have to erase everything. I have to erase almost everything. But I don't have to erase the perimeter of a part because my next one is going to be perimeter of a triangle. This is longer than the word square. Is it going to fit? Yes, it is. It's like the chalkboard magically goes on forever. Maybe it does. For all you know, that chalkboard goes on forever. I could walk another 17.6 feet in that direction, and I'd still have chalkboard to draw on. It's just you wouldn't be able to see me. I'd have to turn the camera. For all you know, this might be a very large basement. For all you know. Okay, perimeter of a triangle where the side length and it's an equilateral triangle. I have to say that or else the question really isn't fair. It doesn't really make sense because you can find the perimeter of a triangle where all the sides are different lengths. Such triangles exist. You can find the perimeter of an equilateral or a, uh, uh, an isosceles triangle. And that would work for the addition. Like when I added the side length of the square to get the perimeter of the square, it works. It works for other types of triangle. But the multiplication part, which is kind of the point of this lesson, will only work if the side length keeps being the same. 
So I'm doing regular polygons. The equilateral triangle is a regular polygon. It's regular because the sides and angles are all the same. And if, uh, all squares are regular for the same reason. The side lengths are the same. The angles are also the same. And you can have regular this, regular that with polygons. You can have regular uh, 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 pentagon, a regular hexagon, and etc. But it's not a geometry lesson. It's just kind of fun to talk about. Okay. Side length is, and I'm not drawing it, I'm just going to say side length is 3.81 inches. Hmm. Now what equilateral triangle would be 3.81 inches? I'm sure there's something. Hmm. Be a good size for a piece of food. I don't know how often you see triangles. But you should see them more often because triangles are really cool. Engineers love triangles, for instance. Okay, so 3.81 inches is the side length of this equilateral triangle, and I want to know its perimeter. So I can do it two different ways. 3.81 plus 3.81. Ooh, chalk flying everywhere. Plus 3.81. That's enough. I only need three because it's a triangle. Write my plus sign, write the line, lined up my decimals, I'll put the decimal lined up for the answer. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24, so I write the 4 and I carry the 2. And then 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. 11.43 11 is my answer, but I have to write the unit of measure. 11.43 inches is the perimeter of that equilateral triangle. But if I multiply instead, it's going to be 3 times 3.81. And I'm multiplying, so I'm not trying to line up decimals. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24, so I put the 4 and carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. I'm able to write all of that. Then I count my digits, and I need 2, so 11.43 inches, thank you, is the answer. How am I going for time now? Oh, okay, I'm running out of time. So, you know what's cool? So when you compare the addition and the multiplication like this, you put them both one next to each other, and you notice that the numbers that you're writing when you're doing the carrying are actually the same, because addition and multiplication are actually the same. Okay, and I think this sort of proves addition and multiplication. We learned two things, except we kind of only learned one, or no, we learned one thing, but actually it counts for two. I like it better that way. It counts twice. Okay, okay. so I'm going to do another one really fast, but I'm not going to do the addition part. I'm going to do it with multiplication. Even though I know I'm running out of time, because I know that the last bunch of examples I have are things that I'm not going to have to take too much time to write out. So I'm going to make everything fit into the lesson. I'm not lucky, he's writing small. Because I want it to fit. And it does, well, it's too small to see, maybe. Let me get a little closer. Oh, there's a dog treat up there. Oh, he's starting to get hungry. Maybe it would motivate me to learn my math if I had an actual whole hot steaming pizza on top of the tripod. That would drive her crazy. She's still here, believe me. She has not forgotten about that dog treat. Okay, so it's a regular hexagon. All the sides are the same length. I'm not going to draw the hexagon. The side length is 1.7. Is that it? Yes, 1.7 yards. So I could add these. But it starts to be a bit of a pain. Because there's so many of them. And that's why multiplication is so cool. Instead, I'm going to do 1.7 and I'm going to multiply it by 6 because a hexagon has 6 equal sides. And 6 times 7 is... 42, so I put the 2 and I carry the 4. 6 times 1 is 6, plus the 4 I carry makes 10. So I have 102. Then I count digits. I need 1. 10.2 yards is my answer. And yes, 
If I were to, I'm going to do it. Seven plus seven is 14, plus seven is 21, plus seven is 28, plus seven is 35, plus seven is 42. Two, carry the four. One plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one is six, plus four is 10. And then I have to have the decimals lined up. <laughs> oh, unit of measure. Why did I do that? Just because I wanted to show, huh, look, see the four there? See the four here? Interesting. Okay, that was fun. And I still haven't taken that sip of fizzy water that I've needed for the last 10 minutes. <sighs> okay, let's erase these perimeter sort of a bit geometry-ish problems. All of it. And let's just do some multiplication of decimals, but let's do some bigger ones. Uh, okay, that chalk came to the end. Good, I have another one here. Let's see if I can do this. I really don't care if this lesson goes a couple of minutes long anyway. <coughs> 273, t oh, no, no, not decimal, times, but yes, if there's a decimal, that's where it would be, times 0 0.65. Now, I'm not going to do it in my head. I don't have time. That's the only reason I could do it in my head but I don't have time. 273 times 65. Forgetting about the decimal right now, just ignoring the decimal. 273 times 65 gives me 17745. Where does the decimal go? That's all we're doing, we're just practicing that. No digits to the right of the decimal. One, two digits to the right of the decimal. 177.45 is the answer, it's true. I did it. Okay, but now you, Try and answer it before I do it. Try and put the decimal in the right place before me. Make this interactive, like the dog that wants to interact with a dog treat. You want to be motivated. Okay, 8.26 times 0 0.34. Yes, 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 I could do it in my head, but I'm not going to. 28084. 28084. Four. Where is the decimal going to go? Where is the decimal going to go? Yup. You're right. Okay, 0 0.194 times 0 0.86. Without the decimal, 16684. 16684. Why do all three of these have five digits? Oh, because all three of these have one, two, three, five digits if you're not paying attention to the decimal and you're ignoring zeros that are on the left. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, don't count that one, don't count that one either. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. That's why the answer is, well, I guess when you multiply a three-digit number by a two-digit number, you're going to get a five-digit number, but not always. And I'll leave it to you to figure out when you would not get a five-digit number in the answer. One, two, one, two, three, four, wow, five. One, two, three, four, five. Point one, six, six, eight, four. Yes, yes. It works because I have the correct answer written here, but I'm not looking at it because I know what to do, which means that you know what to do, and I know that you can do it as well. And these numbers are starting to get really complicated, if you want to call it complicated. I think what we should say is these numbers are really starting to have more digits, but they're not getting more complicated because we realize that we know what to do, so therefore it's not complicated. We have power, 84.3 times, what am I doing for time? Oh, yeah. Pretty good, 7.7, .7, and that's going to give 64911. 1, 2, 1, 2, 649.11, yes. Okay, let's do a couple of challenger ones. 482.61. Times 11.34. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah, 
that's that's some amount of digits. Five, four, seven, nine, four, seven, two, seven. I'm not even finished. Two, seven, nine, seven, four. Woo! One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 5,472.7974. I guess it doesn't matter how big these are. We can do this. And at a certain point, it's fun because I'm using a calculator to get these values, but eventually your calculator starts going automatically into scientific notation because it doesn't have enough digits in its display to list the number any other way. And we're not teaching scientific notation right now. So there's a limit to how big an, uh, an example I can do with a calculator, but there's no limit to how big an example I do on the chalkboard. Huh. Chalkboards are less limited than calculators sometimes. 21, I'm going way over here just in case I need the room. 21.3716. 21 times 0 0.23845. 0 0.23845. Five equals five six five 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 six five five. Not finished. Where'd it go? Oh eight oh two oh eight oh two. Again, an eight-digit number because that's as big as I could fit into my calculator's display screen. And but now I'm counting digits. Oh, oh one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, uh oh, nine. Calculator can't do this. But if I need nine digits to the right of the decimal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I need to put a zero before all this, so I'm going to put a zero and then write all this five, six, five, five, oh, eight, oh, two. I don't think these students are afraid of any decimal multiplication, no matter how large they get. That is the take home message. And now the dog is going to get her take home treat. And that's the last thing in this lesson. Come here, come on. Up, up, oh yeah, stretch, that's right, okay. Up you go, I'm going to say goodbye. I look forward to next week, it's fun. I'm waving right now because the next thing I'm going to do is take this treat. Uh, well, well, someone's excited. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. I don't know if I want to be this close to her when she's eating a treat. Bye-bye. See you next time. Ugh.